Have you ever thought about turning a furniture piece into an art piece? Instead of using a traditional canvas, why not use the furniture piece as the backdrop for your painting? Hey, I'm Deanna, welcome to my studio. I'm super excited for this project. As an artist, I typically create paintings that can be hung on a wall. But in this video, I'm going to be transforming this furniture piece into an abstract art piece. I'll be blending these gorgeous blue and green fusion mineral paint colors and adding in touches of gold leaf. My plan is to create a wavy blended look that's inspired by colors and movements of an underwater scene. So let's get started. Before I paint a second hand or an old piece of furniture, I like to give it a good clean before I start. I like to use TSP, tri-sodium phosphate. It's an all-purpose heavy-duty cleaner that removes any wax, dirt, or grease prior to painting, and it helps prepare the surface for painting. This can irritate your skin, so throw on a pair of gloves before you get started. And mix your TSP. It's 20 parts water, warm tap water, to one part TSP. Just stir them together until the TSP fully dissolves. I like to use a kitchen sponge with a scouring pad to give a really good scrub down to the piece of furniture. Just dip the sponge into the solution, squeeze it out, and scrub down the piece. Depending on how big your furniture piece is and how much grease and grime there is on the surface, you may need to change out your bucket of water a couple of times. This was a fairly small piece and it wasn't too dirty, so one bucket of water is good. Now I want to rinse the surface with clean water to remove any of the TSP residue that might be left on the surface. Now that I'm finished with cleaning, I just have to wait for the water to completely evaporate before I can move on with painting. For this project, I'm going to be working with Fusion Mineral Paint. I contacted them to see if they'd be interested in donating some paint and brushes for me to create some videos, and they were. So big thanks to Fusion for donating the paint and brushes for today's project. I'll leave links in the description below so you can easily find the products I'm working with if you'd like to recreate this finish. They also sent me an easy prep guide. So depending on the type of surface you're painting, will determine a couple of the prep steps that you might have to take. The first step suggests cleaning with TSP, which I've already done. And for something that has a lacquer or varnish on it, they recommend sanding to scuff the surface with something like a 220 grit. So as soon as this is dry, I'll move on, give it a quick scuff. Now this piece does have some watermarks and it's got some chips and a few imperfections on the surface. I'm not gonna be sanding to remove that all or smooth it all out. It's just going to be a light scuff to rough up the surface, create a little bit of tooth or texture for the paint to easily grab onto. I'm ready to get started with painting. And what I love about abstract art is there aren't any rules to follow and everyone will interpret the finished piece a little bit differently. For me, it's about creating a feeling with colors and movement that's suggestive of a subject matter without having to be a photorealistic representation. Like I mentioned earlier, on this piece I want to create a wavy blended look that's inspired by underwater colors and movement. I start by putting some of each color into its own tray. Ingle Nook, Heirloom, Renfrew Blue, and Midnight Blue. I like to put the colors in their own tray. I find that I can control the amount of paint that goes on my brush a little easier. And also I will be using the same brush between multiple colors, so I'm not worried about contaminating the paint with other colors if I don't wash my brush thoroughly between each one. My first layer is just going to be blocking the overall shapes and colors that I want the final piece to have. Anytime I'm working on a vertical surface, like a dresser or a wall or a canvas that's hanging, I like to start at the top and work my way down. Simply because if anything drips or runs, then it's not gonna mess up what I've already done at the bottom. On this piece, I'll have the darker blues and greens along the bottom, kind of blending into the mid-tones and then the lightest at the top. I'm gonna start off with this beautiful wide flat brush and create back and forth sweeping motions and work to blend the paint right on the surface. 
Don't worry about brush strokes, they'll just add to the texture and the overall look. And again, this is just the first layer of a couple to help lock in shapes and colors. I've got the oval brush that I'll use to press the paint into the creases and the grooves. And then back to the wide flat brush to sweep across the flat areas. I'm gonna move on to my second color, which is a light blue color. I'm gonna start with the big flat brush and I'll start a little bit lower than where my last color ended off and pull it back into that color. Again, I'll grab the oval brush without rinsing the brush. I'll just dip it into some of that lighter blue color, get into the creases and the grooves. And then come back to the wide flat brush to sweep across the flat surfaces. I will be painting the sides. I'm just focusing on the front side for right now. And I'm ready to move on to this third color here. Again, using the same brush without rinsing, I'll just dip a little bit into the paint, start lower than where I ended up and pull the color back up into it. You can see the colors already mixing on the surface from the previous color still left in my brush, which is exactly what I want. And now I'm going to move on to my fourth color, my dark blue color. Just like the other three colors, I'm going to start a little lower than where the paint ended off and then pull it back up into the previous color to blend it. The first layer on the top and the front is done. Now I'm going to move on to the sides. My first layer is done and dry, and I'm ready to move on to coat number two, which will be very similar to layer number one. I'll start with the light color up here and work my way down to mid to dark tones, blending the colors on the surface as I go. If you can remember my inspiration photo is that underwater scene where the light comes through the water and it starts off light and as it goes down and down, it gets darker and darker near the bottom. So those are kind of the shapes that I blocked in here. I'll probably bring the dark color up a little bit higher onto this side here. And then later on, I'm gonna be adding in little bits of gold leaf, just suggestive of that glimmer of sunlight on the water. So here we go, coat number two. I wanna add a little bit more dimension to this top color so it's not just completely flat. So now that I'm working with my second color, I'm gonna take my flat brush and just get a little right onto the edge. Not too much, just a little. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just tap in some areas to create a little bit of movement, wipe the excess off my brush, and then just sort of feather it in, blend it in. Not totally blended, but just enough so that it doesn't look like a harsh shape or line, but you can see a little bit of tonal variation moving into that first color, almost like ripples in the water. I just wanted to give you a closer look at my brush strokes. I hardly put any pressure on the brush and it's a back and forth sweeping motion. It can almost be described as a, as a dry brush. Just adding little bits at a time and then feathering it back up into the color above. And every now and then if I feel like I've brought too much of the next color in, I'll just go back to the color from before, get a little on my brush and kind of blend back and forth on the surface.
tap in some areas to create a little bit of movement and then just sort of feather it in, blend it in. Not totally blended, but just enough so that it doesn't look like a harsh shape or line, but you can see a little bit of tonal variation, almost like ripples in the water. This piece has now been sitting for a couple of hours and it's completely dry, so I'm ready to add in my little touches of gold leaf. I'm not gonna go into too much detail about the metallic leaf process in this video, but if you're interested, I do have another video where I cover all of the details, everything you need to know about gold leaf, how to apply it, and frequently asked questions. I'll leave that link in the description below if you'd like to check it out. Using a small brush, I'm going to apply adhesive size to the surface where I want my gold leaf to stick. Adhesive size is a specialty glue that stays sticky when dry. So wherever you paint this, the sheets of gold leaf will easily stick. It takes about 20 minutes to set up and it stays sticky for a couple of days. So you don't have to work too quick. I'm just gonna add little bits to start because I can always come back and add more, but it's harder to take it away if you put too much. I'm ready to apply the gold leaf when the adhesive size turns clear and it's sticky, but nothing comes up on your finger, then you know you're ready to move on to the next step. Take some gold leaf, gently press it into the adhesive size, and use a clean dry brush just to break away the excess. The adhesive size dries clear, but it's shinier than the paint, so I can easily see where I've applied it to the surface. Here I am with the finished piece. The gold leaf is on. I've got the hardware back in place. And I just wanted to mention that I'm not going to be putting a top coat on this particular piece. The paint I'm working with, Fusion Mineral Paint, has a very tough built-in top coat. So once it's had its full cure period, which is about 21 days, this will be wipeable, waterproof, stain resistant, scratch resistant, so really nice durable finish. 
The gold leaf areas are a little bit more delicate, but if I put a top coat on, what happens is it'll even out the sheen. And right now I'm getting really nice reflection from the light on the gold leaf and the paint itself is matte. And so the contrasts are kind of playing off each other. And I don't want to risk ruining that by putting on a top coat and evening out the sheen. So for this particular piece, no top it coat is necessary. So I've just gone ahead and put the original hardware back on the furniture piece. It's a brass finish that's slightly tarnished and it has a really cool look to it. I had a few ideas about the hardware, whether I should cover them in gold leaf or paint them blue to blend in the background. So I'm looking for suggestions, what you think I should do, if I should just leave them as they are, or if they need a little something else, um, let me know down in those comments below. If you enjoyed this video, remember to click the thumbs up. And if you're looking for more inspirational DIY techniques and tutorials, just like this video, remember to hit that subscribe button and also the notification bell because that's how you'll be alerted every time I upload a new video. If you have any questions about this video, the techniques that I've demonstrated, please leave your questions in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you back here next time.